womb. Hermaphrodites have both male and female reproductive organs during their lifespan. Some of these animals can later change into the opposite sex. Others can suffer the lives. A rough estimate of the number of hermaphroditic animal species is 65,000. So, can humans be born as hermaphrodites? That's what we'll find out today in this episode of Our Out Studio. The term hermaphrodite implies that a person has both male and female reproductive organs, not just parts. In other words, they can produce both egg and sperm for reproduction. It is impossible in human beings. The word hermaphrodite is not only used for animals that have both natural male and female organs. You may have heard pseudo-hermaphrodite and true hermaphrodite in humans. They have been used to describe ambiguous genitalia and gonadal dysgenesis. These words are out of date as well as misleading, stigmatizing, and scientifically specious and clinically problematic. These conditions are now called an intersex or a new medical term, disorder of sex development, DSD. DSD is a name given to a lot of different variations of sex development. According to the United Nations, between 0.05% and 1.7% of the population is born with intersex traits. The upper estimate is similar to the number of red-haired or twins people. DSD people are born with sex characteristics that do not fit typically binary notions of male or female. Here are five sex characteristics present at birth. Sex chromosome composition, XY or XX. Gonads, it can develop into testes or ovaries. Internal genitalia, it can regress or develop into uterus. Sex hormones, high or low level of androgens or estrogen. The appearance of the external genitalia, it can develop into penis or clitoris. Typical males have things in the left column. Typical females have things in the right column. Intersex people can have things in between, or some are left and some are right. However, they can have both. So what causes DSD? We will go through every sex characteristics to see what causes DSD. First, sex chromosome. The most common sex chromosome compositions are XX and XY, but there are several other possible compositions. For example, X0, XXY, XXX, XYY, XXYY, XXXY, etc. and etc. If only XX is female and only XY is male, then how do we account for atypical chromosomes? Second, the gonads. The protogonads will differentiate to become either ovaries or testes. By default, the protogonads will differentiate into an ovary. The formation of testes was activated by the SRY gene on the Y chromosome. Swire syndrome and 46XX testicular DSD are forms of gonadal dysgenesis. Swire syndrome people were born with typically male XY chromosomes, but the SRY gene mutated. 46XX testicular DSD people were born with typically female XX chromosomes, but they have the Y chromosome gene SRY attached to one of their X chromosomes. The gonads can be any combination of ovary, testes, or ovotestes combined ovary and testes. A person might be born with ovary on one side, testes on the other, or one ovary and one ovotestes, or some other combination. Without fully functioning gonads, produced no hormones, the body did not develop in typical male or female path. 
Third, the internal genitalia. Male sex differentiation is mainly driven by two types of hormones, testosterone and anti-malarian hormone, AMH. AMH is responsible for the regression of malarian depths in male fetuses. When AMH is either not secreted or inactive, malarian ducts do not regress. It leads to persistent malarian duct syndrome, PMDS. People with this syndrome have normal male structures, but they have a uterus. On the other hand, in Mayer Wokitansky Custer Hauser, MRKH have normal female structure, but the malarian ducts fail to develop completely, resulting in a missing uterus. 4. Sex hormones and 5th, external genitalia. The level of testosterone ultimately determines the appearance of the external genitalia. Androgen insensitivity syndrome, AIS, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia, CAH, are the two most common cases. People with AIS have normal male structure, but their bodies don't respond in the normal way to male hormones. And so, the external genital cannot develop into penis. People with CAH have normal female structure. But the adrenal glands of people with CAH produce excess testosterone when they were in the womb. And so the external genital cannot develop into clitoris. As the level of testosterone are unusual with AIS and CAH, both of them usually have ambiguous genitalia. We've looked at the five factors present at birth. Because there are so many stages of sex development in human life, there are a lot of opportunities for a person to develop along a path that is not the average one for a boy or a girl. Due to the existence of multiple forms of intersex conditions, many view sex as existing along a spectrum rather than simply two mutually exclusive categories. People usually have no doubt about their gender, but we don't actually know our chromosomal makeup. We still believe we are typically male or female. In fact, if you were born with a penis, you would think you have XY. Likewise, if you were born without a penis, you would think you have XX. Obviously, it's not correct. So. What made doctors decide our gender? That determination was the size of phallus. For the last 50 years, the size of the phallus has been the principal decision-making criteria for doctors. In truth, surgeons can make a hole as a vagina, but they can't build a pole as penis. No one cares if they have XX or XY, have testes or ovaries, have uterus or not. Maybe it's time we need to listen what intersex people think is not what physicians can do.